Hi, my name is Eduardo Ox. I'm this person here. And the title of this talk is on why most of, most of the best features in EV look like five minute hacks. And this is a presentation at the MXConf 2020 happening in November 2018-29-2020. So this is part one of the presentation and here I'm going to explain some, pre some ideas that are prerequisites for understanding the rest of the presentation. The three main keys of EV are meta E, meta K and meta J and I'm going to start by explaining meta E and meta K. Uh, meta E is used to follow a hyperlink and technically it is essentially just a control E to move to the end of the line and then a control X control E to execute the, the sex before point at the end of the line. And the thing is that a max comes with many functions that can be used as sex hyperlinks. Uh, we can consider that they point to somewhere. I'm going to refer to that as the target of the hyperlink. And if we execute this sex hyperlinks, we go to that target. For example, this one is a hyperlink that points to a buffer with a man paid for cat. And usually, but not always, after following the hyperlink, we can go back by just killing the, the current buffer that the hyperlink created, the target of the hyperlink. But this is the example here is badly behaved. If we execute it, it creates a new frame. And to go back to the previous situation, we have to either click here or type Ctrl X 5 0. Uh, so here are some examples of, of sex hyperlinks using standard MX functions. This third one is uh, badly behaved in a different way. If we execute it, uh, we, the target is created in the same window as we are now. <clears throat> but it also shows a lot of garbage here in the echo area, so the, the current frame becomes a bit messy. And, uh, well, one of the first things that I did when I was creating AV many, many years ago was that I created variants of all these functions that uh, were better behaved. And they were better behaved in two senses. The obvious one was that they, they all created the target in the same window as before, so I could go back by just typing meta k, which is essentially just killed this buffer. And, but I also implemented something extra that are the post spec lists. For example, for example, these extra arguments here are a post spec list. And these extra arguments specify a position in the target buffer. And uh, in this example, this, this spot post spec list means uh, starting from the, from the beginning of the buffer, search for the first occurrence of this string after that, after the beginning of the buffer, and then search for the first occurrence of this string after that. EEV also defines some hyperlinks that do not create new buffers. Uh, here is the first example. If I execute this one, uh, this one is a hyperlink to the, to the result of running this shell command date. Uh, but instead of showing the result in, your, in the new buffer, the result is shown here. So if I execute this hyperlink, the result of date, the output of date is shown in, in the echo area, and if I execute it again, it shows the result again, and the result changes every second. And uh, if so, this is a variant of find sh. Uh, find sh zero is the variant that just shows the output in the echo area, and find sh shows the output in the new buffer. And uh, here is an example of a, of a hyperlink that calls an external program. If I execute this, it, it calls Google Chrome to open a certain URL. Here it is. Let's go back to MX. Uh, if I execute this hyperlink here, uh, it invokes my favorite PDF viewer, which is XPDF. 
uh, it makes XPDF open this PDF page, this PDF in this page, and these other arguments are ignored. Let me show how it works. Here it is. This is a, an excerpt from a book. Uh, so the page 3 in the PDF corresponds to page 113 in the book. And this variant here of the hyperlink above, it opens the PDF in a different way. It runs a program called PDF to text on this PDF here. And MX takes the output of running PDF to text on this PDF here and displays it in a buffer. And now this post-pack list is interpreted in a different way. This thing is interpreted as a, as a number of a page, and MX goes to page 3 by counting form feeds in the converted version of the PDF. And then it searches for this string and in this string. So let's execute this to see what happens. Here it is. I opened the same page as before. It starts with lecture one. So the other hyperlink searched for this string and for this string here. Uh, and this thing here is a hyperlink to a video. Uh, and when I execute it, it's going to open this video here at this time, this timestamp. Let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's the way to do it. Uh, and also, some hyperlinks that that I defined, uh, they don't work like, like usual hyperlinks. They work more like browser buttons, browser, these buttons that appear in web pages. Uh, in the sense that these buttons usually don't open a new page, they usually d just do something to change the current page. Uh, if I execute this, the action of this function, EEK, is to... Uh, in it interprets this string as a series of keys and it acts as if the user had typed all these keys. So if I execute it, I get a hello in the next line. If I execute it again, I get another hello, another hello, hello, another hello, etc., etc. Let me undo this mess. Oops, oops. And here is another kind of button that defines a new function. If I execute this sexp here, at this moment, though, is not defined. And if I execute this, MX is going to show me a message saying, uh, symbols function cell is not defined, something like this. But if I execute the, the, the fun, this the action of this function O here is to run this, which opens a certain directory. Let me go back. And here is another button that defines several functions at the same time. If I execute this, uh, Note that the, the result of executing this expression is the name of one of the functions that it defined, that is this one here, and let me explain the, these examples. Uh, one of the functions that this thing here defined is called find org git file, where this org git in the middle of its name is exactly this first argument to code cd. And the action of running <coughs> find org git file on a string like this is that find org git file uh, takes this string and prepends this string to it this one here which is the second argument to code cd and then it executes find flying on the result which is this one uh, and find flying is my variant of find file that supports post pack lists and this uh, function here that I'm uh, referring to as a button, it also defines a function called find org git node here, where the org git is the same string as here. And this function opens a node of, of an info manual. This, uh, this sexp here opens this node in the org manual, 
uh, it is equivalent to this exp here. So uh, in the passage from this line to this line, we prepended to the node name, the name of the manual here. And find node is my variant of this standard MX function here. But find node also supports post spec lists. EV also defines some functions that uh, define shorter hyperlinks to PDFs and videos. Uh, remember that this thing here is a shorter hyperlink to a, to a file, and this thing here is a shorter hyperlink to a node in an, in an MX manual, in an info manual. Uh, if we run this thing here, this code PDF page, this acts like a button that defines a certain function. Act uh, and this string, this other sex here defines another function. The first one defines the function find fongspivak page, and the second one defines the function find fongspivak text. Uh, when we run the find, when we run find fongspivak page, it opens this PDF here. The name is quite long. Uh, this example opens this PDF at page 8 and searches for the string contents. Oops, sorry, in this case, in this case it just ignores this string here. It, it only considers the number of the page. Let's try. Ah, my God. Here it is, uh, the contents of a book that is freely ava av available. Uh, here is another page of the book. And if we execute the uh, this hyperlink here, find Fongspivak text, it converts the PDF to text and it searches for the page 8 in it and then for the string, this string here in page 8. It takes a few seconds. Here it is. So this is the uh, ASCII version of this contents page here. Uh, note that this block here is a kind of an index to that book. Uh, I have the full index somewhere, but it's very long, so I just copied a few lines here. Uh, so this is a, a link to the to se uh, section 1, chapter 1. This is to section 1.1. One section 1.1.1 one 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 and so on. And here is a link to the index. And here is a part of, of my index of uh, positions in the video that we just saw that I think that are especially relevant. Uh, so this hyperlink, hyperlink is a kind of a button that defines this function here, find punch and, punch and drew the video. Uh, let's try. And uh, we can also use this for video tutorials. For example, this is a very good tutorial on, on Magit. If we execute this, uh, then these functions are going to be defined, and these functions open this tutorial on Magit. And these are some of the positions in the tutorial that I found especially relevant. This is a very dense tutorial. I had to take notes of everything, and I had to watch everything things several times. And for example, this is a link to the position in the tutorial that explains uh, how in Space, space Max, Magit, Magit interprets Space GS as Magit status. Let's see. Uh, for beginners, space GS to initiate Magit's git status. Uh, you can also. That's it. And here are some examples that I, I took from somewhere else. Uh, the video tutorials from uh, Ralph Koenig about org mode. Now let me show how the functions that define these shorter hyperlinks are implemented. The standard way in Emacs to define functions that define other functions would be with macros. 
let's see an example. This is a standard function that defines new functions. Uh, and if we execute it, one of the, res uh, the its result is the last function that it defined, which is e glyph, which is here. Uh, it's implemented as a macro. We can look at the result of macro expand, which is going to show show us the result of of this of the expansion of, of this. Instead of expanding and executing, it just expands and shows us the result. Here, the result is a bit messy; is too big for humans to understand. But we can run this or the sexp here that takes that that result and pretty prints it so this is the pretty printed version of uh, this macro here we can see that it defines several functions here for example this one uh, and this just as a curiosity is a link to the, the definition of CL dev struct and note that the code is huge uh, well it's very well commented but it it has lots of special cases it has uh, it supports lots of constructions and so it's huge and it's very difficult to understand I mean I found it very difficult to understand and here's a link to document the documentation of CL dev struct here in the manual for CL, which is a kind of support for some features of Common Lisp in the Max. So let's compare this standard way of defining functions that define new functions, which is with macros, with this. Uh, I'm going to use a slogan repeatedly. The slogan is, I am a very bad programmer. Uh, I'm a very bad programmer, so when I was trying to create functions that would define new functions, I found it easier to gener generate Lisp code as text and then run read and eval in it. The code CD that we saw in the previous section, we can see the, the code that it produces by making a copy of this line and prepending this string here to the name of the function. So instead of running code CD, we run find code CD, and it creates a new temporary buffer with the code that uh, code CD would execute. So it's a series of the funds and a few set queues and so on. And this thing is implemented mostly as a template. Uh, the Lola, the there's an inner function called ee code cd base that receives just these two arguments and it essentially just runs the function ee template zero on this string here and the things between curly braces are substituted by the values of these arguments here uh, there's one part of the tutorial here that explains all these things uh, except for the rationale for some design decisions and those design decisions are one of the many motivations for this talk but um, we are, I'm only going to explain these things in detail at the end which is kind of soon in the beginning I said that the three main keys of AV are meta E, meta K and meta J Let's see now what, met, what meta j does. Uh, but I need to start with some motivation. Uh, the motivation is that we can define commands with very short names, and actually I became kind of addicted to that. This is an example of a defund that defines a command with a very short name. Its name is just one letter, e, and I can invoke it, invoke it with meta x e. Uh, if I type meta x e now, it opens a LaTeX file that I'm working on. Uh, and I create most of my LaTeX files using uh, template-based functions, like the, the implementation of code CD above. And these template-based functions create uh, files with the extension .tech that start with a series of the funds and comments. For example, 
let's look at this example here. If I execute find LaTeX links with this argument, uh, it's, going, it's going to do several things for creating a file called slash tmp slash foo dot tech. And the header of that file is going to be this, which starts with two, with three defunds with functions with very short names and comments. Uh, let's compare with the situation here. Uh, in my file uh, 2020 favorite conventions .tech, I have this header here in which I define six functions with very short names. And in this case here, that is even explained in the tutorial, uh, this, uh, we have mnemonics for these short names here, and C is compile, D is display, I mean display the PDF, and E is edit in the sense of make a max visit that file. Okay, now I can explain what is MetaJ itself. Uh, we just saw comments with very short names, and the idea is uh, behind MetaJ is that we can define comments with very short numbers. Let me explain this. Uh, the short explanation for what MetaJ does is that it jumps to cert certain predefined places. In particular, a MetaJ without a numeric argument takes us to a buffer with, ba with a basic help and a list of the current age of targets. And this is something that is a bit simpler to understand. If we type meta5 metaj, then metaj runs this sexp here that is associated to the argument 5. I say that the target for the argument 5 is this one. And if the argument is true, then the target associated to the, to the true is this sexp here that opens, well, this one opens the main tutorial VV, and this one opens another tutorial. This is a link to one of the tutorials of VV to the part that explains MetaJ. Uh, I've copied the, the main part of the text here. Uh, the header, the header that MetaJ shows, let, let me show it very quickly. Here, here is their header and here is their rest. The header is very beginner friendly and if you're a beginner who only knows how to use meta e to execute and meta, uh, this should be a k, and meta k to go back, then you can and should use that header, uh, I mean this header here, as your main starting point. And every time that you feel lost, you can type MetaJ and to go back to that header, and you can use its links to navigate to the documentation for MX and AV. Let me explain that. Uh, this header here has several Elise hyperlinks, one here, one here, uh, one here, one here, and so on. Uh, these ones are links to the to the intros, which are the tutorials. Find AV Quick Intro is the main tutorial, and Find AV Keys Intro is a kind of tutorial that is an index of the main keys. And after that, we have an explanation of what some numeric prefixes do. So if we type meta1, meta j, the effect of that is exactly the same as executing this, and we can execute this with meta e also. Uh, <coughs> meta2, meta j runs this sexp, and I, and I can also execute it with meta e. Here it is. It's this uh, intro, this uh, sandbox tutorial, and here is another sandbox tutorial. Uh, let me go back, uh, and then the documentation says that that header, the header that is beginner friendly, is followed by a section that is very beginner unfriendly, that contains a series of defunds like these ones. Here, the last line of the header is this comment here, and then we have several defunds like this. Let me explain how these things work. 
technically what happens when we type meta j uh, without any arguments is that it runs e jump with the argument nil and then this runs find e jumps when i run meta j with a numeric argument for example with the argument 5 it runs e jump 5 and e jump 5 uh, concatenates this 5 to make a name of a function this function here and it executes this function e jump 5 e jump uh, dash 5 and e jump dash 5 is executes find ev e quick enter if i execute just meta j the section that shows the current e jump targets has a line for e jump 5 that is, that is exactly the thing that I was explaining before. So, we can use MetaJ to navigate the tutorials. And we can copy the links. Sorry. Uh, we can copy links to the to, to tutorials to our notes. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, this has some typos. Uh, for example, if I execute this... I go to a section of this tutorial here that explains the main keys of EV and these things are uh, hyperlinks. I can mark a hyperlink like this, it is just plain text and I can copy it to my notes. And the idea is that every time, every time that I find something that is interesting I can create a hyperlink to it and I can put these links in my notes so I can navigate back to all the interesting positions very quickly. Okay, next feature. If we type meta uppercase J, uh, then uh, this, this is a function that transforms the current line in a certain way. Uh, let me give an example. Let me isolate this and let me create duplicate this line to, to make clear what happens. If I type meta uppercase J here, this line here becomes a defund for a jump 6. And the target of this e jump is exactly this sexp here. Let me undo this mess. And if the first word in the line is not a number, for example, here, let me do the same thing, duplicate the line and type uh, meta uppercase j. Then meta uppercase j converts that to a defund that defines a, a function with a very short name. And this function with a very short name uh, opens this file here in the directory with a copy of the, the Git repository for org mode. Let me undo the mess again. Oops. That's it. Uh, meta uppercase J is a uh, particular case of, of something that I use a lot in EV. I have, uh, EV has lots of commands that, key se sorry, key sequences that are like meta uppercase letter and uh, almost all of them operate in the current line and transform the current line in a certain way. For example, this is a file name and if I type meta uppercase F here, it becomes a link to that file this is, is the name of a man page, and if I type meta uppercase M here, it converts that to, the, to a link to a man page, and this is a shell command, and if I type meta uppercase S here, it converts that to a link to a to find, sh find shell. And until a few years ago, these functions uh, with meta uppercase letter were half of my main ways of creating sex hyperlinks with few keystrokes. In the beginning, of course, I had to create my sex hyperlinks by typing each character, but uh, after some time I decided that I needed something more efficient. So this is end of part one of the, of the presentation. So this is part two of the presentation, and the, the main theme is here is the standard describe key function that comes with the max, and my variant of it. 
The thing is that the standard described key in Max is user friendly, but it is hacker unfriendly. Well, I felt so. And when I tried to complement it by, by writing a hacker friendly version of it that produced the sex hyperlinks that I needed, I got something that I found really lovely. And several of the main design, design decisions of EEV can be seen there. But when I showed my variant to other people, they hated it. They felt that it was totally against the, their notions of user friendliness. Uh, okay, so let's see the standard describe key. If I run this hyperlink here, I get this, the result of running describe key on the key down. And this is a big buffer with some things in italics and some hyperlinks here. These hyperlinks are standard in the sense that the, the targets are not visible and they are implemented using buttons in MX Lisp. Uh, this section of the MX Lisp manual describes how buttons work. And the, the source code is quite difficult. I mean, when I was starting to, to try to decipher this, when I was a beginner using MX 19.34, I felt that this describe key was very difficult to understand uh, and I felt that it, the, the designers, the, the people who wrote it were sacrificing too much of the hacker friendliness that I was expecting from it to make it beginner friendly. Let me explain what are the, the problems with the standard uh, describe key. If we think that hyperlinks are things like this, with the target and the text, then in the button hyperlinks of describe key, these three bad things happen. First, it is hard to extract the target from the hyperlink. Second, it is hard to recreate a Lisp code that would go to that target. And third, it is hard to copy the full hyperlink, including the target, to other buffers. I only knew how to copy the text. Uh, when I was trying to decipher what the scribe key was doing, I created lots of hyperlinks like this to inspect the text properties and things like that. For example, in the description of the key down here, uh, we have a button that points to simple.l. The text of that button is simple.l. This hyperlink goes to the to the middle of this button hyperlink here. Uh, this hyperlink here goes to the middle of the button of this button hyperlink and then inspects its text properties and then goes to this section here of the description. So this is a high level description of the text properties. Uh, I mean the text properties that make it a button and this is a lower level description of the, these text properties. And the button that uh, points to forward line, sorry, the, the button that whose text is forward line, this one is slightly different. This hyperlink here goes to the middle of that button. And uh, this hyperlink goes to the, to the middle of that button, inspects its text properties and go to the section of this button of this help uh, buffer here that describe the, the button and the lower level view of the text properties. So I started to, with things like this to understand what these buttons were doing and I was able to figure out how these things are implemented in describe key and in similar help functions in MX. And I discovered that one of the main lower level functions that MX use for this is a, a function called find function no select. If I run find function no select on next line, uh, it returns a pair, uh, a cons made of a buffer and a position. So I created functions that would, that would uh, follow this, that would open that buffer in that position, and then this is a post pack list. So we could go to these positions and then search for this string and another string and another string and so on. So this goes to the definition of find a function and then to a, to a string after it. 
and I used these things to implement my own functions that pointed to the same, the same targets as the button hyperlinks and the scrap key. Uh, again, let me show the comparison. This is the standard describe key here, and this is my variant. Uh, it creates a buffer with links, with a list hyperlinks links about this key. We get this. So each one of these functions is either a blank line or a, or an list hyperlink. link. Uh, here is a slight variant of the of the function find e key links above. In this variant, the argument is a string that has to be processed by read KBD macro to convert it to the lower level format. And note that these functions here that I wrote, they display temporary buffers with no help at all. Uh, to be honest, there's a link to a, to a tutorial here, but this is a recent addition, so let's ignore this. Uh, they, they display temporary buffers with no help at all, just lots of hyperlinks. And these hyperlinks can be, they are very hacker friendly in the sense that they can be followed with meta e. They can be copied to other buffers because they are plain text, because uh, they are just sexps. And they can be inspected in the sense that, uh, for example, here, we have a hyperlink to a function that we, uh, it may be difficult to figure out what this function does, but we can go to that position and then type control H F to see the descri description of this function. And here is a hyperlink to that does that uh, in my syntax, say. And the, this list of hyperlinks were generated by this code here. They ju just uh, used a back quote to, to generate lists of sexps. And I, I felt that this function here uh, that just g generated this list was uh, very easy to understand and to modify. So this was hacker friendly in the way that I wanted. And so I started using this, and this idea of using buffers with sex hyperlinks and no help violated all the notions of user friendliness that I knew. So I was exploring some, something new at that time, and this is the end of part two. Part three of this presentation is uh, about the killer features of EV, or why everybody should use EV, or at least have e EV installed even if they think that the EV is too weird. So this is a very quick listing. EV has Elise Piper links, which are super nice. It comes with lots of tutorials. The main one here explains all the main features. Uh, there's also a tutorial with, that's an index of all the other tutorials here. Many, many, many tutorials. Uh, if we forget everything, we can just type meta j and remember that this this part here is beginner friendly and the rest is beginner unfriendly. Uh, there's a tutorial on MX Lisp here. It mainly explains how to understand uh, a Lisp code, which is much easier than it's much easier to understand a Lisp code than to, than to understand how to program in a Lisp. And m most people are only going to need this. Uh, EV is very easy to install. It's an helper, so we just need to do this thing here. And it's very non-invasive. Uh, years ago, several years ago, it was a very invasive package, but then I changed everything. Now, uh, if we toggle EV mode on and off, what's going to happen is just that the EV key map, key map becomes activated or deactivated. And when we install the EV, the, uh, I mean, when we require EV, the only things that happens globally are these things here. Several functions and variables become defined. All of them have standard prefixes ex except for one. Uh, three characters are changed in the 
standard display table to make them appear as colored glyphs. Uh, the red star and two and the open double angle brackets and the, the closed double angle brackets. And two environment variables are set and this is a trivial technicality. Uh, we just uh, run a def advice around one function that is, that is used by MUN. Just this. Also, EV has a very high discoverability factor. And there's a, a way to create a very easy to, a to, way to create a hyperlink to here. Uh, I do not have time to show this now, but for example, if I'm here in a tutorial and I think that that this uh, section is something interesting and I want to create a, a hyperlink to it, I just have to type a certain key sequence here, and here I got a hyperlink that I can copy to my notes. And this hyperlink goes to that section. Oops. Uh, we have hyperlinks that point to specific positions in P PDF documents and in video files. Here, this one opens a PDF and displays it. This one opens a PDF and converts it to, to text. And this one opens a video in a certain position. And we also have a way to control shell-like programs. Uh, in my presentation of the last year, I spent one third of the presentation explaining this, and I think that I gave a very good demonstration there. The demonstration is here. We can go to the web page and go to this section of the web page and start by this point. And here we have uh, an explanation and so on, whatever. And I've already mentioned this before, uh, EV comes with a very nice Elisp tutorial. So that's it, this is the end of part three. So this is the last part of my presentation, and it's about the title of the, the presentation. I called the presentation why most of the best features in EV look like like five minute hacks. Uh, I've already run off the, out of time so I have to, to skip this first par part here in which I describe how I was exposed to several different notions of user friendliness and how the one that really blew my mind was the one in, in a certain uh, fort environment. Uh, and let me make the long, uh, long story very, very short. Uh, in all this process, I switched from, from the belief that the user was always someone else, someone external, and that, that I always had to write my programs for this external user. I switched from, from, from that to the belief that I am the user, and I can play with the interface that, that I want. I can write programs with that, that only I am going to understand, I can experiment with hundreds of interfaces and then select the best ones and document them and then share them with other people who are also experimenting with interfaces in their own ways. And so EV has lots of things that are user-friendly in these unusual ways that I've explained before. And, uh, and if we disconsider that this notion of user-friendliness is valid, then this implement, these things that AV implement, they are user-friendly and hacker-friendly at the same time. And let me show one example. This is one, this is one that really took me one, only five minutes to implement. Uh, at one point, a few months ago, I discovered uh, that Sasha Chua's uh, weekly posts about MX News had, uh, were also being posted to a, a mailing list that is stored at lists.gnu.org and it's called MX Tangents. Uh, and, I did, and I found a way to create the links to, to the posts in both places, uh, but I had to use a template for that. So what we are seeing here now is a template with the, the default values. So this means that we have not uh, set the, the year correctly, we have not set the month correctly or the day correctly. 
but if we, if we run this exp here, uh, let me do something else before. If we uh, run this exp here, uh, we, uh, we change some of these entries in the in the template, and we get these links here. They all work. For example, this one opens. Uh, the blog post in, in Sasha, Sasha Chua's site and this one opens it in the mailing list and sometimes I want the org source of that and the easiest way to get the org source is to look at this link here uh, that has an attachment and if I take this uh, link here and I take this stem that points to, to the attachment and I put it here and I generate this page again with all this data then I get a, a script here that downloads let me switch to a smaller font it downloads this attachment and it uh, renames that attachment to something dot slash mxneos sorry something's uh, hyphen mxneos hyphen uh, something mxneos.org here uh, the file is already here already with the right name so I can open it with just this hyperlink let me go to the big font again and now I have the org source for that hyperlink sorry for that blog post and so this one line thing here is in a sense a hyperlink to to this blog post in all its formats uh, if I execute this I get links to to all the places where it is posted and I get a hyper and I get a script to download the local copy of the org source of it and that's it well I'm already out of time so let me finish here thanks Bye.